Our most popular episode to date is our Business Model Canvas podcast. We briefly covered each of the nine building blocks of the Business Model Canvas in that podcast. In response to many requests from our audience, we are providing nine podcast episodes addressing each building block separately in greater depth. The Business Model Canvas, developed by Alexander Osterwalder, is a template often used to develop ideas and a monetization strategy for a startup venture. This episode is the sixth of nine and will cover channels. Our favorite tools for entrepreneurs podcast addresses tools and concepts that are useful for the launch and growth of entrepreneurial ventures. Your two hosts will be Professor Gary Palin and serial entrepreneur Ryan Budden. Hello, Professor Palin. How are you? Doing really well. How are you doing today? Fantastically. I'm glad we're back talking about the business model canvas. Yeah, I always enjoy speaking about the BMC. Great. Today, we're going to cover the segment called channels. The really brief flash of what the channels are, these are the actual ways in which goods are supplied to your customers. Whether it's a product or a service, think about how that is actually being delivered to the people that are paying you. Definitely. Typically, you'll see the physical stores, online platforms, or direct sales are the three most common. Right. This is an interesting section for me because I think it's really, really relevant and important to some businesses and a lot less relevant to other businesses like online stores. Yeah, you can say that about every aspect of the business model canvas. Each block is more important to some types of businesses, less important to others. But I believe this is one with the greatest disparity. Yes, absolutely. I never skip it entirely. It's always great to talk about just keeping in mind how things are going to get delivered, because no matter what type of business you are, it is relevant. Just where you're putting time into this can be adjusted. There are major distinctions on the activities that you have to pursue based on the channel. So for example, if you're setting up a physical store, that's a totally different animal than an online platform. Right. Absolutely. Yep. Or if you're providing a service, how that service gets delivered. If it's an online service, there's very little channel work. If you're a cleaning service and you have to physically be in present with somebody, then this channel might be a lot more appropriate. Absolutely. For my consultancy, the big time the channel comes into place is regulatory. So if you have to go through a distributor, if you have to go through certain channels, then this becomes hyper important and understanding what input they require to get the output to the customer. That's when I really like to highlight this. Regulatory will always come back and bite you if you don't follow it. That's exactly right. Yeah. I just did a very small consultancy with an alcohol distributor. So they're manufacturing alcohol product to bourbon here in Nashville. And I had to quickly get up to scale on what liquor distributors need and the legislation that has to be filed, the laws that they have to follow and how that actually is a huge intermediary between the customer and the person producing the product. And my understanding that will vary dramatically from state to state. It will. And as soon as you cross state lines, there's an entirely different set of laws that you have to adhere to. So in some states, a specific type of business, I'm not saying alcohol, will be seamless where the same exact business might be very onerous from a lot of bureaucracy. Right. We're uncovering the importance of the channels, just understanding if you are participating in one of those industries to make sure that when you're thinking about scaling, it may be super easy in your local market, but making sure that you're putting the steps in place now so that you're not hitting these enormous roadblocks that can be really time consuming down the road. That's where I always suggest start a business on where it will be, not where it is currently. Because if you start currently based on your local laws, but you have plans of building, you may have to rethink your whole business model because of the distinctions of a particular type of regulatory issues. Right. My work at the Entrepreneurship Center, a lot of times the question comes up, just because you live here, is this the best place for the business? Yeah, I always ask that question of my students because they very often will project their business in whatever city they live in. And I always say, why? And they say, because I live here. And I somewhat sarcastically will say, I like to start my businesses where my customers live, not necessarily where I live. Yeah. And I've seen that. I'll reference Nashville again. We are a hub of lots of things. And that can either help those things or make it difficult for those things because you're competing against much larger entities. 
And I believe Home Depot did that. I don't recall. I think it was in California the founders were living, but I forget where the first one was. I'm not sure if it was Georgia, but it was quite a distance. And they analyzed the marketplace and they thought that was the sweet spot. It had nothing to do with where they lived. It's where their potential customers were. Smart business. Can't argue with their success. Yeah, exactly right. So what other areas, what other industries do you put under these channels and make a focal point for them? It's really the type of store, like a brick and mortar. So you need a physical store. And from there, then your location is key. You know, that old axiom in business, the three most important areas of business are location, location, and location. Yeah. Well, physical store, yes. Now an online platform will have a totally different type of assessment. Then it's like, what is the optimal platform to use? And there is a litany of platforms that you can use for online ventures. Mm -hmm. It's almost overwhelming if you're just starting. Yeah, it is. And there's a lot of new softwares getting put out in that space that claim to be the best and move you forwards. And who knows, I think a lot of them need some time to be tested. So it is overwhelming, especially from a diving into it perspective. And in days of old, which you don't see very often, another model was direct sales people going door to door. You don't see that if you see it at all. It's very, very rare today, but it still exists as an option. Yep. Especially with industries where online is big, the cost effectiveness is something to analyze in this box as well. So what are your upfront costs to work with the platform? What costs like shipping are going to be incurred and how you have to format that in the price that you're putting through the pipeline? Also, where you are on the supply chain, because people will typically think of the business selling to either the end user consumer or a B2B directly to the business, but they're forgetting that very viable businesses could be a wholesaler. Then your channel takes a different path and your physical location takes a totally different path than a storefront would. Warehouse looking at distributing through a large area, even if it's in the United States exclusively, you may want to deal with hubs for warehouses. Those are types of things you have to think through. Yeah, that last mile, which has become a large component of any sort of distribution. So there are multiple options for channels, but you want to be really focused and understand what is optimal for your venture, do a deep dive into it. And as I said, don't look at where the business is today. Look at where you want it to be and build it with that vision in mind. Well, I think that's a great last thought. Anything else you'd like to add to that? That was my wrap-up conclusion was looking at it from a long-term perspective. And I would say that with virtually any aspect of business, but it's very critical with the channel because restructuring and rebuilding your channel is very painful, very expensive. Absolutely. As always, take it seriously. I agree. Talk to you soon, Professor Palin. Thank you very much. Thanks for listening to our Favorite Tools for Entrepreneurs podcast. As always, you can head over to profspirit.com to check out more resources and courses designed for you, the entrepreneur. Please follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, and others to get the most up-to-date information as it is released.